Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to episode 58 of Talk for the Quickfire podcast, where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's me and our special, special guest for today, Andre Fredrickson, who's going to be answering some questions today. Andre, please say hi to these fine people listening. Introduce yourself and give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do before I shoot some questions. Hey, Louis. Honored to be on the show. My name is Andre. I do underwater photography. I work part-time as a dive master. It's been a hobby of mine for, for quite some time. And uh, yeah, really excited to be on the show. Thanks for oh, having me. Brilliant. It's so good to see. You. And um, yeah, I mean, w- when you start a podcast like mine, for example, there's kind of like this bucket list of people that you'd like to like to podcast with in, in the future. And uh, I've got through quite a few of them, but someone involved with scuba diving has always been on the list. I'm so so proud to have you on the show it's really a great honor and um, I've always been really interested in the kind of underwater photography and underwater life it's just fascinating to me I have some great stories about it and honestly I just I just can't wait to ask four fantastic questions to this amazing fellow on the other end of my screen right now so if you're good to go Andre should we crack on with question one I can't wait for these four amazing questions. (laughs) (laughs) Let's do it. Okay, so um, let's let's wind back the clocks a bit then. So how did you originally get into diving then? So who got you into it? And when did you start taking pictures and videos of these experiences? Oh, wow. Those were a lot of questions in one, I think. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That's cheating, isn't it? No, I got into (laughs) diving uh, almost exactly 10 years ago uh, during a trip to the Philippines. Uh, it's It was something that had been on my mind for such a long time. Uh, me having grown up in the mountains, as it happens, uh, of course, scuba diving wasn't something that most people did. Um, so, But it was definitely something that I had thought about exploring. Um, to be honest, it was sort of a, 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 you know, a way for me to get over the claustrophobia that I had actually suffered from for quite some time. Not a severe one, but something that, you know, had been nagging me a little bit over the years. And, and so for a period of time, I was trying out all these king things from spelunging to, uh, is that the pronunciation? Spelunking, spelunking, spelunking. Hey, yeah, something hey, like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, to uh, to what? Yeah, other other things where I sort of tried to push myself myself a little bit further. And scuba diving was on my list of activities where I felt like, yeah, that might be a way for me to you know to work on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, uh, f- photography. That was something that I quickly realized that I wanted to combine with with underwater. Uh, activities you know whether it be free diving mm. diving or whatever um because i've been doing a lot of photography on land obviously and, okay. and sort of a match made in heaven um once i started diving i was instantly bit and uh, yeah just kept on rolling from there that's so good man yeah i was going to ask you if you'd kind of been interested in the photography side of things before going into the diving but that's great and i have to say i mean the whole the whole underwater thing it's just it's so vivid with life and it's such an amazing thing and i have to say for people who i mean the whole idea of this podcast really is to get people to be introduced to new people so for my fans and stuff to see you and to see the stuff you do so i'm just going to say it i mean having a look through andre's stuff like the instagram page and the and the pictures my god they are just ridiculous and um, i actually um because my dad is a big fan of underwater photography too i um I showed him a few of your pictures on on the Instagram and <laughs> you know what parents are like with technology. And he was like, I want that one. I was like, oh, yeah, I was, I was just going to show you this one. Oh, yeah, I want that one too. Wallpaper, that one. Oh yeah, I want this one too. I was like, dad, please. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you this page. Um, so it's, That's fantastic. Amazing. it's fantastic. But you, you, I mean, you've got such a talent for it. So good to see that you've gone down the route you have. Um, right. So for my second question then, um, just to ask a little bit about kind of like other divers then as well, going down the same sort of a route. So for divers out there who really love their craft, you know, the diving, but would like to start taking pictures and getting into the photography side of things like you did, um, where would you start with that then? So what camera gear would you start with? And do you have any tips or tricks for kind of progressing in the quality of content and devel- developing that skill set? Certainly. I mean, first of all, you, you need to realize that, you know, first of all, I think you should try to become a, a good diver, um, mm. first and foremost, before you take on any more tasks, because it just inevitably there's going to be more task management and you already have a lot of things on your mind when you're diving uh, from, you know, managing your air supply to keeping track of your buddies, your group, et cetera. Right. Mm. Um, so that's step number one, try to become as good a diver as you possibly can be before you take on more. You know, having said that, of course, there's no harm in starting out small, you know, get an action camera. Those are great 
cameras these days. Mm. I mean, there are tons of great action cameras just to see if you can get a, you know, get, get a feel for what it's like um, and try to, you know, f- try to figure out your your way of, of shooting. If you're into video, if you're into photography or in somewhere in between. And if you can try to tag along with another another diver that does underwater photography, I think that's probably the best way of learning. And that's probably something that's a little bit unappreciated, to be honest. There are some really good courses that you can take uh oftentimes um photographers or underwater photographers they uh, arrange uh, workshops etc so try to go to one of those or to a seminar uh look at what others are doing i i you know i get a lot of inspiration from other divers and other, other diving photographers out there obviously i mean there are so many amazing places all over the world that i haven't visited yet uh so just to get that kind of inspiration of places to go ways of shooting these uh you know these different landscapes or divers there's so many techniques for me yet to learn um which is also part of the fun you know you know there's always going to be another dive site there's always going to be another dive with another fish doing something that (laughs) i've seen before Mm -hmm. uh and there's always places to go and there's always new things to learn so yeah try to buddy up with another underwater photographer or videographer uh see if you can borrow um i was gonna say you know steal beg and borrow no don't steal but (laughs) you can if you can borrow a camera from your dive shop or from a buddy uh, and get started from there, if you don't want to make that investment, um, because it can quickly add up and get costly. Um, but oh, yeah, yeah sure. that's small. Very for true. Sure. Yeah, I have to say, um, it, this reminds me a little bit of a story that I have actually from a holiday I had. And um, it's true, actually, you don't have to have a huge budget to start up and find the passion for it. So I was in Antigua with my mum and dad and um, and I had this little action camera, like one of the underwater cameras with the with the waterproof case and stuff. And um, and we only had snorkels. Trust me, no scuba tanks or anything. We're just going right. to kind of swim through the bay. And um, and we found this. Um, well, we went for our first swim. and We saw this incredible underwater life beneath us in these very, very clear waters. And we were thinking, how can we actually... Um, kind of get the camera down there or something because well obviously we don't have scuba tanks we're not going to be diving down there it's going to be very quick videos so we actually found this cooking cable um from from, <laughs> from from an oven it's like very stiff and very long um probably about five meters long or something and we wrapped the action camera to the very bottom of it and we were holding it by hand and kind of steering it around by hand at the very oh, bottom of, it's brilliant and um and we thought we were just going to get fish on the thing and um, we were kind of swimming along we ended up finding this turtle um that was um it was kind of resting on one of the bay chains and it was just the most incredible video such an inspiring sight and it kind of came up after that uh, another day and it, it kept coming back and uh, we got to swim with it it was just incredible so i mean if you have that passion for it as well you don't have to have like the huge budget you don't have to have the best camera you can actually just go kind of like on a small budget and find if it's the thing for you can't you Absolutely. And absolutely. It doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, you know, my the first cameras I used, they were compact cameras, something mm-hmm. that was easy to travel with with an underwater housing. Uh, but I have to say that was very that is very uh, inventive of you guys. I mean, that <laughs> you know, you, you think about it from your perspective, but imagine from the from the from the turtles perspective, you <laughs> probably, that thing was probably the most interesting thing he'd seen in, in weeks. Very <laughs> so true. Probably as excited as you were. Interesting in what way, though, was this her to thinking, oh, that's cool. So thinking what is this thing that's just kind of in, that's just disturbing my sleep right now <laughs> so uh, i'm not sure which interesting it found it but it certainly uh, wanted to clear off straight after that but it made a great video for the humans up top that's for sure um <laughs> right so um my third question then um kind of on the same subject about beginner divers and stuff um you said you know you've got a bucket list of places you want to go and everything and i'm sure you've been to many already i mean looking at the pictures some incredible places that you've gone diving so far so um so back to the beginners um let's say we have an aspiring scuba diver tuned in to the podcast right now listening to this fine mm. person so do you have any beginner tips whether that's gear training or mindset and also could you maybe give us a top three must see scuba dive locations to start off that bucket list of theirs again a lot of questions in one <laughs> i like how you're how you're handling this this limitation <laughs> Uh, <laughs> stop it <laughs> i have to no, get the most it. out of my people and call it a four question one okay it's part of the grind oh i love it i love it um well it's a great question um i have to think about that a little bit i mean mm-hmm. again as if you're a new scuba diver and you want to you know focus on if, if it's photography or videography you want to focus on obviously it might be easier to go someplace where it's warm 
Mm-hmm. Um, Cause that, you know, inherently means a little bit less gear to, to keep a track of. I mean, we here in Denmark, uh, other parts of the Nordics, etc. We, we dive in dry suits, which are inherently a bit bulkier and there's more things to um, get in your way and, and to, you know, keep your mind occupied. So if you want to try to focus on the photography, uh, maybe start someplace warm, a little bit easier uh, as well in many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, sorry, you're going to help me out with some of the questions there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, for example, like you've got a new diver and I feel like people when when they're kind of like for travel and stuff, they all want to have like a, a bucket list of like the top places that they want to yeah. see. So from your kind of experience, with like the places you've been, has there been like a top three must see scuba dive locations that like the people listening who want to get into scuba diving uh, yeah. can like okay. note down and be like, OK, that's the start of my bucket list. And then I'm going to yeah. go from there. OK. First of all, there are so many places that I'd <laughs> love to go back to, to be honest. Um, mm. The, the f- few places that sort of come to mind, my top of mind locations and places I would like to go back to as well, uh, the Maldives, um, Ooh, yeah. a little bit on the pricier end of things, uh, but I would say well worth it. My preferred way of traveling to that kind of location, um, another location, same, same thing there, the Red Sea. Uh, it's, it's a really nice and fairly easily accessible place if you live in Europe, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, both the Maldives, Red Sea, going on a liveaboard, that's a fantastic way of traveling. It's a great way to get a lot of diving. Um, great way if you're into photography, of course, uh, because you know the, what you see in terms of landscapes and life, it's just amazing. Um, mm-hmm. what, another place that comes to mind uh, again, you know, focusing on some of the warmer places uh, is the Philippines, where I started out. I actually went back there twice after after I, I got started with with diving, just because the abundance of life, the the water temperature, <laughs> the you know the water clarity in many cases, and just there are so many places around the Philippines where you have the most amazing diving. Um, so that's a great place if you want to combine. It. If you don't want to be on a boat for for a week or two, if you want to be on land uh, every now and then, the Philippines would be a good option as well. Um, and I'd be happy to go back any day, any day. <laughs> nice. So obviously, that's like your your kind of top few. Would you say that the Maldives was your favorite then, like out of all the places you've been, or was there a certain other favorite? And also, is there like a cold favorite as well? Because you mentioned the hot ones. Was there a yeah. cold one? It's really hard to pick a single favorite, to be honest. Because yeah, I can imagine. There are so many dive sites that have something unique to offer. Uh, mm-hmm. I was recently in Iceland. I've been to Iceland for a few, a few times. I even studied there for a summer. Uh, so I've done diving there a few times. And I was back this summer uh, again, or last summer, I should say, again. And that is one place that you might not think of as a great place to go diving. But it just happens to have one of the most iconic dive sites in the world and 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 more so. Um, so that is, you know, speaking of cold cold dive locations that are fairly accessible uh another cold of course going to to greenland and going up to towards the north pole and doing arctic diving that's uh, high on my bucket list um mm. because of the, you know water clarity and just the sheer experience of being underneath the the icebergs that would be mm. fantastic um and then there are of course other uh, cold ish places that i would like to go to uh i i see and hear great things about uh, british columbia and diving outside of vancouver island for instance i've been yeah. there but I didn't dive unfortunately and i would love to go diving in some proper kelp as well because that's something i haven't done yet whether it's off the coast of i don't know western usa or you know down south and uh, south south africa i don't know yet but yeah those are on my bucket list still fantastic yeah i mean i'd love to get into scuba diving one day and i mean i I took the bug just from from snorkeling so i mean i'd I'd love to do the real thing it's that's not too bad though i mean some of my and and people ask me a lot of times you know do i have to go deep um to to really enjoy scuba is that the whole gist of or the point of it and it's it's really not i mean many of my favorite dives have been shallow dives you know five to 10 meters at most mm. or even shallower uh, because that's where you get the proper, you know, real proper sunlight. That's where you get the most vivid colors. Oftentimes you get abundance of life around reefs, uh, uh, you know, around the shallow ends. So starting out with, you know, snorkeling, maybe free diving, it's not a bad way to get started. And then add on that, you know, that to do it yourself, uh, camera s- selfie stick <laughs> and let's go. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that that sounds about right to me because um, my mum and dad, they, they went to the Maldives way before I was born, I think. And um, and we were actually talking about it today because I said to them, you know, I've got this guy on the podcast and they said, oh, yeah, the Maldives, incredible. They said, I actually said, I've heard that it's like 
heaven on earth and they were like that's exactly what it is and you, you go you go into the water you look down and it's just like this vivid just explosion of color and life and it's almost like it's just unreal almost looking at it is that kind of how it actually is like you're a diver so is that about right yeah i mean i mean i, I think of the you know i think about water world you remember the film with kevin coster yes um, because mm. the maldives obviously it's just comprised of tons of little islands so mm. when you're on a boat just traveling between these islands it really feels like you know you're in that movie the water world where everything's mm. flooded honestly and then you go down and there's you know that's where you have to me the 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 main part of the Maldives lies underwater. Um, mm. Of course, you have these amazing uh, little uh, little islands and and whatnot. But but of course, as a diver, you just want to go down and see what it looks like underneath. Because and, and, you know, I oftentimes say that on Earth we we we're really lucky to have four very different worlds to enjoy. We've got above the water day and night, and we've got underwater day and night. Uh, so there are really four dimensions for us to to explore and four different worlds where mm. you know with very different properties to them um you get to see different kinds of animals at night both above and underwater and and so on and yeah completely different experiences altogether mm, so true yeah and uh, just most people just don't spend enough time actually kind of thinking about this it's a really good point to put into perspective because people just tend to live kind of like kind of quite boring sort of very similar day in day out lives just kind of like based around the daytime and stuff and really there's so much kind of imagination and experience and just feeling to all of these these different dimensions like you mentioned um but i mean since we're since we're on the subject of kind of like vivid experiences and like places like the maldives and these incredible things so um for my fourth question a really interesting one i'd love to hear what you have to say about this so what has been your most memorable moment from diving? Have you seen something incredibly rare or has there just been a moment that was so so magical to you and so vivid that it's just stuck like as one of these top moments? Or if you can't think of a specific one, maybe like a top couple or something. Uh, yeah, it, it is. Uh, that's a hard one. Um, I have some, you know, a few things sort of spring to mind. Um, one of which was actually in the Maldives um, when I, and this is, this is funny because I oftentimes joke about, you know, and, and underwater photographers oftentimes joke about that too, is just when you go diving without your camera, that's when you see, you know, mm. the most spectacular thing, obviously you're going to beat yourself up for it. Uh, so <laughs> it was one of those dives when I wasn't able to bring my camera, I can't remember why, but it might've been a technical <laughs> problem or something. I don't know. Or I, maybe I just forgot to charge it. Um, it happens. So I was, uh, we were, we were, uh, we were trying to dive with whale shark um, because they they were in the area as they are in the Maldives, and the boat had spotted our boat and some other boats had spotted uh, some whale shark, um, and we uh, we tried to we sped up and sort of sailed ahead of it and, and everyone jumped in went down and i was to the far left of the group and we were expecting this whale shark to come towards us, and it. It totally did. So uh, I was to the far left and the whale shark just sort of appeared. Um, I was going to say, you know, out of nowhere because, you know, the visibility wasn't perfect at that during that dive. Mm. Uh, and it was only like a meter and a half away from me when it just appeared out of nowhere coming towards me. And it was it wasn't the biggest whale shark I've seen, but it was, you know, it was big, especially when I got that up close to it. Wow. I could just you know stick my arm out and, and touch it um and that's of course when i started beating myself up not not having that <laughs> camera <laughs> my brother was on that trip too and he had a gopro and he was a little bit further away from me um so i, I swam up to him and i grabbed his gopro because i don't i think i don't think he realized what had just happened I oh wow start. i grabbed his <laughs> gopro and i tried to swim um to catch up with the with the whale shark and of course the whale shark was going against the current i didn't stand a chance yeah but that was such a just that you know that vision of the whale shark coming out i don't know where that was just that's going to stick mm. with me for a long time i can imagine at least you got so, some of it though that's the thing i mean if you had nothing then that that's just a memory I, but i'll tell you I what got, i got a giant tail and myself panting <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to catch up with it um I can imagine. It was, it was, uh, it was a great experience. Oh, I can totally imagine. Um, actually, you know what? Just, just out of interest, then. So, something you said that kind of crept into my mind about the whole thing. Just interesting. So, do you find that like diving without the camera is actually important to you as well? So, I'm just interested. Do you have to kind of find like a 
a balance between the sort of the photography side of things and then seeing the things with your own eyes as well um or do you find like the two the kind of professional photography side of things and then the experience and love of being a diver do you find they just come together perfectly all the time or do you kind of need to have like a balance of the two things i love that question it's a, it's a, it's a good one i think that is something that any photographer probably struggle with to mm. some some degree but whether they're diving photographers or on land photographers uh because you tend to view the world through your viewfinder um mm. the question is do you actually mentally register what is going on or is this just or are you just performing a task are you just thinking about you know how to compose the photo how to adjust your settings uh, does that take over and i guess to you know to some degree it does um i do find myself alleviated sometimes when i don't bring my camera um i do beat myself up for it sometimes when it too obviously <laughs> but but it is uh, yeah i i think it's important to leave your camera on land on the boat every once in a while so that you don't forget to m take mental pictures um or how you know practicing taking mental pictures i think that might be just as important as practicing taking actual pictures with your camera and 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 you know to be honest in some ways some of my favorite pictures uh, i didn't ca i don't have that those on my camera I just, I, you know those are the ones i have yeah. up there. um maybe they have been skewed with time and you know you can you can you know you can fake memories i don't know if that's the, <laughs> that's the case or um i have a pretty vivid imagination so that might be the case but you know at least to me they feel real <laughs> I, and i cherish them um and i guess some in by some ways those are my my best pictures and those are going to be with me wherever i am i love that that should be a quote that that that's su that's such you a good print thing that on a t-shirt yes <laughs> I, i'm thinking that right you better rush to the copyright table right now and get that sorted because i'm coming after you boy <laughs> that's a great one i love it um no man uh, you, you've done such a great job i mean the quality of the pictures and everything and the story and uh, the, it's just it's great to see i love it um Thanks. it makes me ask the question so what's coming up next for you then do you have anything on the planet anything that people can expect to see um well, yeah wh where are you going with all this yeah i've been i've been a bit cautious talking about plans this year i do have <laughs> some plans i did recently lock in a trip to uh to the us um where i'm gonna try to sneak in some diving along the way i'm fortunate to be you know traveling a bit for work um and oftentimes i you know, i'm able to extend my stay for a day or two if i'm going to a place where i can dive of course i'll try to do that um other than that i have some i have some loose plans for the summer i'd love to do another liveaboard uh this year or two even um and i as you may have seen some of my photos i love taking photos of, of divers um yeah. i i, I kind of feel like I, I really enjoy the interaction between people and you know animals or whatever just people in underwater and see how you know th that combination is something that's always been uh, close to heart for me so uh i've had some i've had some uh, divers reach out to me um who would love to be in photos and love to do corporate collaborations so that's something that i'm hoping will come to fruition this this year uh, but we'll see. We'll see. But um, hopefully at least the US, um, I'll be going back to Sweden as well uh, for some diving. Uh, I'll be doing some diving here in Denmark. I've got some fun product testing I'll be doing as well, because that's something I enjoy doing. Mm. Uh, and uh, this year I have this mission to be, you know, do uh, do more video because it kind of feels like that's what people want to see. And I, uh, I, I like pushing myself and learning new skills. So that's high on my list as well. Well, excellent, Andre. Um, well, that has been, um, as you mentioned, uh, our four and, uh, well, quite a bit more than four, but we're, we're going to ignore that part. Uh, questions done for today. And uh, before we wrap this podcast up, it is time for what <laughs> I like to call the shameless plug. So uh, please do feel free to take a minute and promote anything that you're working on, your social medias or anything where we can find the incredible Andre's photography uh, All from right, the thanks. underwater world. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm going to need that full minute. I don't have that strong of a social media presence to be honest uh, at andre diving on instagram that's pretty much it at this point um but feel free to head in there take a look at some of the photos videos reels and whatnot and and give them a like and comment if you have any questions about uh, the photos videos or what i do etc feel free to send me a message as well if you have any questions on in you know related diving or underwater photography if you have any tips on great dive sites for instance or um 
Yeah, any kind of suggestion, really. I'm always uh, I'm always open to that. Uh, I love doing collaborations. So if you happen to be an operator uh, or a dive manufacturer, uh, I love doing product photography, uh, reviews, and stuff like that. Uh, I, th I really enjoy that. So yeah, feel free to to uh, to get in touch. And also, if you happen to be a diver who just want to go diving um, around the world, you know, when I travel, it's great to meet up with other divers. I happen to do so every once in a while, and, and I always enjoy it. Sometimes we go diving. Sometimes we just go out for for a drink or so um and um yeah I, I think that's like one of the big perks of diving as well is just that that community of divers is fantastic and i'm always looking for for great divers uh to uh, to photograph as well so if you want to be a model uh hit me up on on instagram and we'll see what we can what we can do great stuff andre thank you so much for joining me today for the talk for podcast my pleasure it has been an, it, honestly it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on man thank you for your time thank you so much honored to be on the show and excellent questions i love them thank you very much and thank you guys for listening this has been episode 58 and if you'd like to listen to our past episodes go and have a look at our channel and if you'd like to listen in for our future ones make sure to hit that subscribe button and spread some love by leaving a like and a comment signing off for now